Here's a close view of a frogman's equipment. First of all, a woolen undersuit for warmth. Over this goes a two-piece suit. Slippers are fitted to the feet. The top half of the suit has a thin rubber hood. The joint between top and bottom halves is made waterproof by rolling two rubber skirts together. The oxygen apparatus is completely self-contained. Final adjustments are made and the frogman is ready to take the plunge. This is the simplest and quickest way of getting into the water during a demonstration. But the German frogman who was sent down to blow up the Arnhem Bridge wouldn't have gone in this way. They'd have slipped in slowly and silently. The leg movement of the crawl is used for the forward movement, the hands being used to control direction and depth. This new kind of equipment gives a great freedom of movement compared with normal diving equipment, but it's only possible to use it in fairly shallow water. A frogman can stay underwater for about an hour. The frog suit was first made by the Italians, but the one you're looking at is an improved British design made by C.B. Gorman. Watching this exhibition reminds you that there's not much for a man to discover in competition with the animal world. He can swim underwater like a fish, he can fly in the air like a bird. Only one thing more to be learned, to live as peacefully as a lamb.